What's up, you sick motherfuckers? Welcome to another episode of Kruger's Corner. I'm Mike Kruger, joined with producer Todd. What's up? And tonight we are back at it with some more episodes of Freddy's Nightmares for you guys. And we are starting season two now. Uh, so if you haven't checked out uh, our season one finale episode, go check that out. Uh, also, all the reviews for every episode of season one is up, so you can check that out as well. Uh, so starting off with uh, episode one of season two, Dream Come True, and it's a Freddy episode, so definitely one to look forward to. And uh, in this one, a psychologist treats a boy plagued by Freddy Krueger, and then a cameraman tries to catch Freddy on tape. So... One thing I like probably my, the highlight of this whole episode for me was Freddy has this awesome like kind of monologue thing uh, like experiencing a nightmare in living co color and it was just like really well written and he was totally into it. So like by that moment I was like, "Oh, this episode's going to kick some fucking major ass." And honestly, the first half of it really did. Uh I loved just the whole angle with the psychiatrist you know having to go make a house call with this kid being haunted by freddie uh this dream the tv dream sequence uh was like kind of a nice homage to uh johnny depp's kill in nightmare on elm street one uh especially with freddie's glove popping through the bed and everything yeah. like that i was fucking awesome that's my favorite kill out of the whole franchise so i was gushing over that uh i also love the scene uh, where the doctor has the vision of Freddy doing his best Jason Voorhees impression and crushing <laughs> his own skull. Uh, I, it was just, it was hokey, but awesome. And like the green ooze popping out of his head. Cause you know, they probably, they probably wanted to use minimal blood. Uh, it was, it was a nice little, uh, nice little touch. The, the only thing that really sucks is the second half of this episode. I wasn't really that into uh, it's very Freddy light until like the last five minutes, may maybe even last like three. Uh, and just the whole story going on wasn't really that interesting following this cameraman. I mean, we did get a nice, like, you know, when Freddie does pop up, the scenes are memorable and they're cool, but I don't know everything. It, there was some left to be desired uh, in this one. I would say overall, probably out of all the Freddie episodes, this may be the weakest one for me. Um, or maybe like the second weakest. Uh, but overall, I still liked it a lot. It's just like my rating isn't going to be as high as like the other Freddy episodes because I just didn't enjoy it that much. And I think that stretch of about 15 to 20 minutes where we had no Freddy Krueger at all uh, kind of hurt it in the second half. Uh, yeah, I agree with you on that. The, uh, I also agree this is probably the the weakest Freddy episode thus far. Um and I don't know if it's just the fact that season two, we start off, we have the Nightmare on Elm Street 5 makeup, which I'm like, uh Yeah, dude, eye. me too. <laughs> I, 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 I'm glad you caught that because I was like, yeah, that I'm, I'm really sad that we went from like three and four to fucking five. And around five is when the makeup start like five and six. The makeup isn't great. Uh, I, really I think it got better in six, but five for me is the worst. Yeah, no, I I, I totally agree with you. So that like bought, like so so far, I'm just like, uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which they shot this around the time of of part five, so it makes sense they'd use that makeup. Um, and yeah, I did pop that we have Charles Cyphers from the original Halloween Shift bracket pop up in this one, so that was cool. I did not. Um, nah. um, but yeah, overall. I think the first half is better and like the, the Freddy bit at the end of the, of the episode of the second half, yeah. I did enjoy that bit. So it is, I, I do feel like it's a step down from season one so far. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right. Well, let's rate this one, go into episode two. So me, uh, I'm a three and a half out of five. Like I said, by no means is it a bad rating, but I, all the Freddy episodes, they haven't gone lower than a four out of five for me. So this is definitely the worst one. I think. I was going back between a three and a three and a half. 
The Freddy monologue, I'll give it the three and a half. Yeah, the monologue, the two things that prevented me from giving it a, just a plain old three was the monologue and the Johnny Depp fucking kill yeah. homage. I'm going to start uh, thinking about the makeup and drop it down again. So let's, <laughs> all right. Let's, yeah, let's, let's just, just move on. <laughs> yeah, let's, all right. Sounds good. So uh, now on to episode two, Heartbreak Ooh. Hotel. And in this one, following an Elvis sighting to the Springwood Hotel, a tabloid reporter finds that the phony stories that he writes come true. Meanwhile, an amnesiac has a terrifying dream that he committed murder before losing his memory. So I grew up on fucking (laughs) the weekly world news. I love those stupid tabloids. Just (laughs) fucking Bat Boy, Lock This Monster sighting and, you know, the Washington River. Like, just stupid shit like that. I I was really into it as a kid. Just mainly because I loved aliens and cryptids and they would always pop up and those type of things. Uh, So I was definitely really interested with the concept. And, like, the first, I would say, about 10 to 15 minutes of this episode were really good. Uh, That pregnancy we get with... uh, the demonic baby popping out, which is Freddy's fucking <laughs> Fred, uh, baby Freddy from I did my Five. notes. I was like, ah, you're double fucking me two in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, so I I, I thought that was, that was kind of cool, at least just to see that. Um, but, you know, it would have been cooler if it was actually Freddy. It was kind of yeah. goofy that they just threw some fucking horns on it and expected us not to realize. I uh, think this actually came out before. Oh. Hey, that makes sense. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna check the date now that I'm curious. Now, yeah, that would that would that would make sense if it came out beforehand. Well, if not, it was just really lazy. <laughs> yeah, just like the laziest shit. Uh, unfortunately, after that pregnancy fucking fucked up scene, uh, the story really fizzles out, and it just it becomes very uninteresting for me personally, uh, especially with you know the whole. Uh, the guys putting the arsenic in the drink and stuff. I was just like, ah, oh, this is just so fucking just basic and not really mm-hmm. that inspired at all. Um, the second half of the episode for me did absolutely fucking nothing for me. Uh, I just, I wasn't into the amnesia patient. I mean, the little dream sequence he was having when he's getting, you know, injected by that syringe. It's the, like that was okay, I guess, but I wasn't, satisfied with you know where the story went you know he's got this partner now his partner fucked him i just it, it, i wasn't into it uh so wasn't really that big on this episode but i will say i popped pretty hard for the fucking freddy thing so that is going to affect my rating a little bit um yeah so i looked it up this was like almost to the day two months after nightmare on elm street 5 came out theatrically <laughs> So <laughs> I guess funny. it was before it hit home video. So there's a few people who wouldn't catch it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, also notable, this was directed by William Malone, who did the uh, the House on Haunted Hill remake, Fear.com, and uh, the fair haired the fair haired child from that National shit Horror. sucks. Yeah, <laughs> fair haired child was like the worst. I probably I think that was the worst one. Uh, out of the whole Masters of Horror series, <clears throat> I did. I do have a fucking soft. I do have a fucking soft spot for Fear.com, though. Yeah, even though it's basically a ring ripoff, but oh yeah, <laughs> and then Ring basically did it later too. So whatever. Yeah. They ripped House it on Haunted off. Hill. House on Haunted Hill is one of those underrated remakes. Haven't seen it. All right, it's hard to replace Vincent Price, but yeah, I'm a big fan of the original, so it it, yeah. it I, I just never f- found the need to. But uh, those Dark Castle remakes, that and Thirteen Ghosts, were were both really good. I kind of wish they would have kept that model of remaking those William Castle, oh, I, like yeah, yeah, that would have been really cool. Because there's some good stuff to mine, and it, it no one was getting mad about those getting remade. So Didn't they remake Dementia Thirteen, and it's fucking like terrible. I don't think they did, or not, not them, but like somebody did, and yeah. it was fucking so bad. I can't remember who. Yeah, I remember watching it because, like, I I think I was asking you guys like if I should pick up the Blu-ray because I just have I've only seen the remake and it's fucking yeah, terrible. Twenty seventeen. <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. Yeah. Um. Anyways, we're obviously on on more interesting things than this episode. Uh. So let's just fucking rate it. Yeah. 
I was a two out of five, and but I kind of am gonna bump it up a little bit just because of how giddy the tabloid thing made me and the Freddy fucking thing. So I'm a two and a half. Yeah, I got to go two on this one. It's a little below average for me. I did yeah. part B because I had to see that stupid fucking baby, but <laughs> I'm Dude, not. It, it, I mean, it, granted, like, I don't necessarily love it, but it did pop me. I was just I like, get oh, the nostalgia pop. pop. Yeah. Well, that <laughs> and like, I used to have a figure and that was one of the accessories wow. was the baby. So, like, I it, it brought me back just to when I was collecting all those Freddy figures. Uh, that like they they did NECA was awesome uh, when they first came out with them because they just did everything. They were like, all right, we're gonna do all the fuck all say, all the movies like as fast as we could. And the only one figure that was bad was probably Freddy's Dead. It's the like the, the could you pull it up? Actually, it's fucking so stupid okay. looking. It's worth uh, it, it's worth showing the audience because he's just got the goofiest fucking face. And it's Neca, right? Yeah, it's Neca night or Neca. Freddy's dead. Freddy Krueger. It is the he's got the power glove on, and it's got like the worst fucking face sculpt I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but uh, it like other than that, those figures were really awesome. And what was cool was. The only way you could get Freddy, uh, the first Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy with the outstretched arms is if you got the original line because he later on came out and they reissued it and he didn't have the outstretched uh, arms accessory. Uh, okay, Let, let's pull it up. I found some pictures. I see oh, what you mean. Oh, dude, it's so bad. I I mean, he looks like a fuck, almost like a fucking plush toy. Like it's, it's weird looking. The goofy smile. Yeah. Um, on, here we go. Share screen. God, uh, but yeah, ne here we go. NECA, I really wish would have put out. Uh, there it can, is. Can you full screen it? I can't on that one because okay. it's uh, it's a video thumbnail. Let me find another picture. Yeah, it's just it's not a fight. It's a really bad sculpt, unfortunately, which which kind of bummed me out because like there was a couple of options you could have had. There you go. If you could mm. just fucking zoom in on the face, or, or if you can't, uh, you could you could basically tell from looking at it right there. It just he's got like this sideways look, and his eyes are all fucking yeah. weird looking, and he looks like he's got, got mascara on. Uh, Robert looks good though. Yeah, no, that that was the only figure that was worth this shit. To be honest with you, uh, in that line because or well in the uh, for Freddy's Dead. Because, like, that was the only Robert fi figure I think they ever put out. No, there um, is one of Freddy's dead one I have with the clothes figure. Oh, the retro cloth? Yeah. I, is it a NECA one? or No, I, I and it's not. I don't think it is. If, 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 you, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's a Freddy versus Jason one. Yeah, and it has the flip box I don't like. Yeah, it's a side, it's a sideshow collectible. <laughs> yes, figure. there I, we go. I, I had the, I had that exact same one too. Um, I had that one and the one that had uh, the Demon Freddy. You know when his face okay. is all fucking crazy. Uh, so here's a little preview of fucking <laughs> uh, some of the merch stuff that we'll be talking about towards the uh, in the yeah. big grand finale. So uh, there you go. I'll uh, definitely so, pull that one out too. <laughs> all righty. So, um, yeah, just make sure you like, share, subscribe, uh, comment what you guys thought about these episodes. Uh, check out some of the episodes from season one that we did. Like I said, they're all up there. Uh, pretty sure there's a playlist too. So, yeah, uh, check, check that out. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash flesh wound features. Everything starts at just a buck, and you get early, uncensored, and exclusive content on there. So, uh, like I said, just starts at a buck. And thank you. And yeah, I think that's all I got. Uh, all our social medias are in the description. Uh, follow us on all of those, including our Discord server. That's pretty active now. Kind of proud of it. So, uh, good job, Kruger. That was your baby. So go 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 check that out. Uh, I'm, we're always posting, shooting the shit in there, talking about horror news and stuff. So you can be pretty updated on uh, everything horror if you uh, join. So uh, yeah. Uh, other than that, you guys stay sick and good night. Good evening.